back at it again. The Barbershop Talk Podcast. I got my man Dave, as always. My man Vito, as always. So, uh, why you trying to cut me off? Uh, y'all, go ahead and, y'all go ahead and introduce yourselves, man. What up, y'all, man? I'm back, man. I'm going to kill it again this week. Uh, 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 uh. Hey, y'all, I'm just punching my bag, y'all. Uh, uh. <laughs> Yo, this is Mike. This is Mike. You know what I'm saying? The Mike Tyson on the mic. You hear me? No. Nah, what's up? What's up, y'all? What's up, y'all? This is Vince, man. Look, man. And we back at it again. Trust me, man. If y'all missed last week, y'all need to go ahead and check that. Um, And then, why you done? Come get this one, because we back at it live. Let's do it. That's what's up, man. So, yeah, you know, I want to start, as always, with, like, a little brief check-in, see how y'all boys doing, see if y'all got anything going on, see if y'all got any new updates. I know y'all, you know, y'all talked last week about the valleys and coming up out them valleys. I just want to see if y'all had any any other nuggets of wisdom or anything else to share with the, with our listeners. Yeah, man, so, um, good, um, so... I had to talk to uh, FCA this morning, uh, which is a uh, fellowship of Christian athletes. Um, I, I actually, yeah, yeah, man. So I'm a member of that. And so what we do is we we do it at the schools, the middle schools and the high schools. And so we put together uh, like a like a bracket of where we just go around and speak. We rotate, go different schools. So anyways, so this week, man, um, I heard um, I heard one of my mentors uh, use this use this quote. He said he said procrastination. He said something like, "There's no such thing as procrastination. That it's just not a priority to you." And and I was thinking about that thing like, huh? And he, he, then I got I was like, you know what? I gotta I gotta speak on that. I I gotta speak on that. So I ought to, I, I took I took the notes and then I just went into my little zone. I got in my zone. And I was like, you know what? I got to speak on that. So um, that's what I spoke on today. And basically, I was letting them know that to me, I totally agree with them. There's no such thing as procrastination. It's just not a priority to you. Because if it was a priority, I asked them this question. I asked them two questions. I said, hey, did anybody in here think twice about brushing their teeth this morning? Everybody, everybody, ha, 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 no, Mr. Vince, no, Mr. Vince. I said, I, I think so. I, I said, I asked you one more question. Did anybody in here think twice about going to sleep tonight or whether they were just going to stay up all night when they had school tomorrow? They're like, no, duh. And you know, we start school at 730, man. I, I was out, you know what I'm saying? I got to give me some sleep. I don't even want to get up in the morning. I was like, exactly right. So because that's a priority for you to brush your teeth because you don't want to walk around with foul breath, because it's a priority for you to get sleep, because you know you gotta get up in the morning, you didn't procrastinate. So, to me, it's no such thing as procrastination. It's just not a priority to you. I'm done. All right, respect, man. You know, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna keep it light. I guess with my update, bro, bro, dropping knowledge already. I know. He, <laughs> I guess he was just warming up over there, bro. Was on that punching bag. He came in hey, deep man. on him. Uh, uh, right. Uh, 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 dropping uh, knowledge, uh, man. <laughs> you know, so you know, I, you know, me. I'm just out here grinding, man, making sure them bills get paid. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 yeah. basically that's basically it. Oh, and if if you know about it, then get ready for the party that's going on next week. Woo! You know what I'm saying? We throwing that Mardi Gras party. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so uh, if you got an invite, make sure you're uh, there. Uh, you know yes, what I'm saying? Because uh, it's gonna be live. Yeah. Um, so you know, you know, that's that's really that's that's it for me. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. But yeah, speaking of valleys, man. You know, I got I got that news that your boy being retained. So that's always good news, man. So you know, I'm about to be working for a new a new financial institution as of uh, the end of the year. But you know. The, the mood around the office was a little somber because everybody didn't get the same letter that your boy got. But her, her. <laughs> as my girls say all the time, man, favor ain't fair. So, you know, I'm definitely uh, uh, thanking God for, for the opportunities that's been placed in front of me. And I'm definitely going to take advantage of it. I definitely won't squander it. Right, so, right. Definitely can't do that. Yep, 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 man. So it's like you say, like that's my number one priority right now. Trying to make sure I grind and provide for my family and, and, and um, take care of my kids and stuff, man. So, yeah, I'm definitely getting there. I de- like you said, I ain't think about staying up late last night because I know I had to go to work. It's simple. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I got to go to work. That's a priority for you, boy. So, right. 
So yeah, man, I got another, I got another good topic for you, and it kind of it kind of goes in with what we were just talking about. Um, this generation of students, young adults, college students, middle school, everybody, anybody that's considered like a millennium, a millennial, and and beyond, I guess. Do you think that they suffer from a problem of what I call the microwave generation or the instant gratification generation? And, and, and by that, I mean nobody, everybody wants to uh, skip the struggle. And I'll keep it simple for you. If you can name a kid that goes through an awkward stage that we had to go through, whether it be uh, buck tooth, with no name, no name brand shoes on. If it go through, for me, I wear glasses. Going through getting some uh, some Coke bottle glasses um, for girls. All these little girls walking around with with eyelashes and and full face of makeup at twelve. Um, all that good stuff, man. And then for for myself personally, you know, trying to skip the struggle of all right, I went to school. So now, you know, give me my give me my corner office and, and my job and stuff like that. And so, you know, if either one of y'all can hop on there and kind of speak to to the microwave generation and what y'all okay. think what what the problem is, and maybe yeah. y'all offer some type of solution. Okay, so so I'm gonna just try them right in if y'all don't mind. Check this out. So so <clears throat> I'm gonna say yes, I agree that this this generation. And yes, I am a part of this millennial. So I'll say myself included. Um, but but I've kind of I've kind of been taught the way. Um, I have some great mentors mentors uh, over my head. So you know, like I, I just can't do much so much without them saying, "Listen here, you're out of line. You're off track. This is what you need to be doing, and this is why you need to be doing it." All right. So so yes, they're like that. All right, but. I got about a couple points. The first point is I believe that it's because the process gets hard. Whatever they're trying to do, whether it's looking good, whether it's um, getting in shape, whether it's getting a career, not a job, whether it's finishing school. I didn't say starting school because, you know, you can start anywhere. Y'all not hearing me, though. You can start anywhere. It's Finishing school was the hardest part. So whatever they're trying to do, I think, it's because the process is hard, and it's because they, they see somebody else struggling in that same arena that they automatically say, you know what, to get there, it was hard. So, you know what, is there any way that I can skip that process? Is there any way I can get around that? All right, that's point. That's point number one. Point number two, they do not have the same upbringing that we had. They don't have the same parents that we that we had. Like you said, me and you, you know what I'm saying? They don't know about L.A. Gears. They just, just because L.A. Gear is coming back now, they don't know about having to wear L.A. Gears when we really wanted to be wearing something else. See, we was wearing L.A. Gears uh, because we had to. Right, they, right. They, they wearing them now because it's a choice. See, we ain't had no choice to wear the L.A. Gears. You know, see, that's the difference. So they didn't have the same parents to let them know, listen, I remember vividly when my mama told me, you know what, son? Come the beginning of this next year, things are going to change. The way we live, the way we do things, et cetera, et cetera, are going to change. And you darn skippy, they changed. But she prepared me. She, she let me know from day one, even when we had ample money, could do what we want, go eat what we want, get any shoes, any toys, had the arcade in the back room. It did not matter. Even when we had that, she let my father let me know that this light bill, just because I got money, I'm not paying this for, for fun. Right. You see, what I'm, you see what I'm saying? That I'm just not, you're just not going to waste my money. You see, I work hard for this, and it wasn't easy what I got. That's point number two. And then for my final, <laughs> for my final point is I think that, you know, I'm a sports guy. Dave, I know you were a sports fanatic as well. But this is, this is one lesson that I believe changed my my senior year and um, changed the, the class ahead of me, which was your which was y'all class, the 07 class. This is one thing that uh, I believe changed them is and, and it's to the point that 
I'm using it. I'm saying they don't know how to lose in the first round. They don't know mm. what it feels like to lose in the first round. That's deep, and, Vince. That's deep. And, and see, and see, when you think you're something that you're not, or when you think that it's all good, and you lose in the first round, you could do one or two things. You can either get smacked in the face and say, you know what? They were right. I'm not as fast as they said I was. I'm not as talented as they said I was. I'm not as smart as they said I was. I don't look good as they said I do. So I'm done. Or you could do like the junior class, my class did, when y'all were seniors, we got beat in the first round. And we came back and we prevailed. We put in work. There was no such thing as an off season. We, we went hard. And guess what? State championships, that's what we do. State championships. The very next year, after getting smacked in the first round, we came back and won a state championship. So it's it's all of that mixed into one. And um, they just don't have that right now, man. Simple as that. All right, I you know I can feel what you're saying, Vince, and I'm and I'm gonna kind of address address your points, bro. Like, I'm gonna go a little bit the other way though. Like I think that millennials get a bad rap, man. I really do. Like being a millennial, millennial myself, uh, I really think we get a bad rap. It's just piling on. It's, it kind of feel like that angry old man that's telling kids to get off this yard, bro. It's like <laughs> old people, old people just be hating sometimes. Um, yeah, yeah. And you know what I mean is yeah we. Yes, social media has made people kind of socially awkward. Yes, we want instant gratification. Yes, our upbringing is not the same as our parents was. Yes, work ethic may be different. People try to find ways to work smarter, not harder. They don't want to put in the hours. Um, yes, parenting is different because they're younger parents. Um, um, all of that, all of that is true. But I don't, nec- I don't necessarily write us off <clears throat> like we, we the problem child generation. I mean, look. The baby boomers, my parents, hey, I respect what y'all did, but also now I got to get ready for the earth to not be here, you know, 100 years from now because all the stuff y'all did, you know what I'm saying? But nobody not all of y'all back, nobody not saying that y'all y'all have problems in your whole generation. I think to paint a whole generation as, like, problem kids is, is, is not fair. So I'm going to go point by point real quick. I'm going to run it down real quick, though. You know what I'm saying? I think... You know, as far as instant gratification goes, I am probably the king of that. You know what I mean? I want I want my food to get delivered faster. I want to, if I'm going to go uh, to any restaurant, I want to get my food immediately. I want to watch whatever show I want to watch on demand. I don't want no commercials. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Everything got to happen right now. You know what I mean? Like, my internet got to be blazing fast. You know what I'm right. saying? And for you, right. for those of y'all that's old enough, there used to be this thing called dial up. And if y'all had to use that right now, y'all probably go crazy. I'm telling you. But yeah. like everything, like I need, I need the the best, you know, or or not the best cell phone, but one of the top cell phones out, so I can, you know, I can download all my apps and do all that stuff. So I'm with you on the Instagram gratification, man. But at the same time, there's a lot of innovation. There's a lot of forward thinking. There's a lot of uh, work that went into building all that stuff. Who do you think drives the technology that we use today? It's millennials, man. We we are taking over the economy, and we're thinking about things differently. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. We used to be a, a country uh, that was like manufacturing and agriculture. And in a lot of ways, we still are. But at the same time, we're thinking about, you know, how can we take over the tech industries? How can we t- revolutionize the energy, uh, like, like for clean energy? Um, and millennials drive a lot of those those, those, that thinking, and we need to be honest. The way the world is right now, we need some stuff to happen fast. We can't wait fifty years to get control of global warming, bro. I'm sitting, I'm sitting here. We coming to you today on, I don't, I don't know. We recording this on February twenty third. It was seventy four degrees outside today. That's that's not, you know. We need some solutions for that. Like I, you know, I like the, I like warm weather, whatever, but. <laughs> I live in Greensboro, North Carolina, bro. I want to winter. I want to fall. I want all that. And, you know, by the time I have kids and they grow up, they ain't going to have one. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know if it's necessarily a bad thing that we we want to fix problems very quickly. Uh, upbringing. For those of y'all that don't know me, um, I grew up in Greenbrier. If you're familiar with New Bern, I grew up in Greenbrier. For a long time, I was actually ashamed of that. 
Like people used to clown me for growing up in Greenbrier because they automatically assume I got money. It's not old all country, old country club. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. live on a golf course. Yeah, so everybody, <laughs> I've been hearing that my whole life, bro. Like you know, I hate it. Riding the bus because everybody gonna give me the whole bus ride. Everybody gonna be talking junk about whatever. You know what I'm saying? So it's crazy that I was actually ashamed of what my parents were able to accomplish. Now, at the same time though, you know, people would assume I got a silver spoon or whatever. At the same time, that that made me want to work harder. I want to work harder than anybody because it's a standard that's been set, and I can't allow myself to fail and to not reach at least that benchmark. There is not, there, there's not a, if I move back to New Bern right now, by the time I retire, I would have, have to have lived in Greenbrier for me to call whatever my career was a success. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I mean, the upbringing is not my parents' upbringing. My, I didn't have to go to work every day on a farm like my dad did at 5 o'clock in the morning. But at the same time, I still got drive. I still got competitiveness. I still want to be great at whatever it is I do. Um, and I'm a millennial, so... I don't, you know, I kind of take it a little bit more personally than it sounds like y'all do. And I get to see, you know, my circle. You know, shout out to my circle, just so if y'all don't know. Vince, EJ, they, they two of my closest friends. Uh, DJ, Terrell, Solomon, y'all know who y'all are. Um, even I got, me and EJ got to speak with Jeremy George and, and Bebe last weekend from New Bern. And all, all the boys out here grinding, man. We out here working. Um, uh Everybody, if you look at our high school class and your high school class, Vince, boys out here grinding, man. People people say what they want about us, but a lot of people from New Bern got cars, got nice cars, got foreign cars, got... I just saw Trey today. Trey driving around a black Challenger with rims on it, cleans them up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> brother, brother get that handed to him. You know what yeah. I'm saying? We out here grinding. So, you know, I don't really don't hold, I don't really subscribe to... We're different than other generations. But... Ain't nothing wrong with that, you know. We if we still got values, we still work hard and all that stuff. And some people don't, but some people in our parents' generation didn't. I mean, I see homeless people that's sixty plus every day when I go to the store. You know what I mean? So they yeah. nobody don't say nothing about them. You know, nobody don't give them a hard time. You know, I don't I don't see a whole lot of thirty something homeless people. And maybe Greensboro don't have a big homeless population, but all the homeless people I see this. They like 50 plus. That's not our generation. That's not millennials. We're we uh, going to figure out a way to get it. That's yeah. a good point. Be- before you go to your next point, just to piggyback off what Dave said, I think that's important, man. Um, we we did grow up differently than this current generation or the generation before it, uh, before them. Or excuse me, our parents' generation. And so I think from what both of y'all kind of said, Vince talked about the uh, they don't know how it feel to lose. You talked about drive and determination. And I think those are just things that are instilled with you somewhere. Some people got it, and some people don't. I don't know. I don't know where my drive and determination kind of came from. And I, I guess I do if I really think about it. But like for you, you talk about your parents and what they were able to afford you. So the benchmark benchmark had already been set for me and Vince. You know, our parents didn't uh, go to school. They weren't afforded that opportunity. I mean, my mom went back later on and got her degree. Uh, my dad didn't. He didn't finish college. But they were still able to afford us a different type of life. And so we had to kind of draw on some other resources or uh, outside type of uh, driving factors, I guess, if you will, to kind of get us there. And not to say that they weren't influential in making sure that me and Vince went to school and got an education and pursued some type of uh, life after high school. But... I think when you don't necessarily see it every day, it may look different. But me and Vince, again, like you just said, we turned out fine. Yeah. Um, hey, look, bro, maybe in my circle, maybe my bubble, I guess, like the people I keep around me or whatever, maybe they just super driven or whatever. But I don't see a whole lot of bums, man, just to be honest. <laughs> I'm just, I don't, I don't, I, at the same time, I wouldn't be around a whole lot of bums neither. But if I go, if I scroll down my timeline right now, there's people out here working, bro. There's people getting up every day and putting their work. And, you know, at the end of the day, that's what it's about. And I see it in y'all. I mean, y'all, uh, you know, y'all y'all work every day. Vince, you, I don't know how many jobs you got, bro. You probably yeah. got about five, six jobs now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm mean? saying? You know, uh, EJ, EJ holding down another three or four jobs. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, you know, we got to eat, baby. We respect the hustle, man. And, it, and it's, you know, I, I just, I take it a little personal when, because usually it's not millennials talking about other millennials. It's baby boomers. And Generation X people 
They're talking about millennials is this big problem, and, and you know we best you know we we the microwave generation like they say, and we just you know it, the world is going to crap because we about to inherit the work inherit the country and all that. I'm like man, whatever. We're gonna do things different, but a lot of ways it's probably gonna be better and more productive. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. You had another point, though. I, I, I think I kind of cut you off on no, it. You know, I'm, I'm not going to keep harping on it, man. I, I think that uh, the only one that I, I will concede, the only one that I will say that people are probably right is that the parenting is different. Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, when you babies having babies, the principles and, and the values that you instill to your kids, like I hate when, like I cringe when I see all these videos of, of mothers um, twerking with their kids in a in a in a video, you know what I'm saying? Like that's not cool, man. Like that's not. I couldn't even. I didn't even see my mama in that light. You know what I mean? My mama was just always a, a matriarch of my family. You know, I didn't never right, see her right. like, man. She gonna be ta- making yeah. twerk videos and. and I never, yeah, I never seen my mom in a in a, in a club dress. I yeah, never yeah. seen my mom go to a club. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I never seen. <laughs> Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and I and I think that is still me some type of respect, man. Not only for my mother, but also for 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 you know my elders and then women in general. Like I just you know my you got to elite you got to be kind of you know I think there's some truth in like you look for a woman that's kind of like your mother. Absolutely. And and uh, you know if you if you you know I I get a lot of my cues about what I look for in a woman. But how my mom carried herself in the class and stuff. So I think that is different. I, I will say that, but yeah. And just to pick it back off that, you know, Nike is a school teacher and she talk about that all the time about the kids and how they don't respect her and different things like that. But I never thought about what you just said. It's probably cause and I again I don't know, this is not all parents, but it's probably cause they mom be out at the club every weekend and doing stuff like that and they don't see their mom and that light of, you know what, I need to respect this lady because she just like my mom. They see her like, oh, my mom, my best friend. We on Snapchat every day together doing our thing, you know, posting uh, posting Vine videos and all that crap. And they, I don't think they see her in the in that light of like, let me respect her and because yeah. she is my mom, like what you just said. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, Vince, what you got to say about that? I know you work with the kids on, on the regular, man. Um. I, my biggest thing, yeah, you know, I'm, you know, with the kids every day. My biggest thing is I have a an after school program where I, where I work. I have twenty, I have twenty kids there. All right, two zero. I have twenty kids. All right, and I have two fathers. All right, that's a, a, a huge issue. All right, a huge issue, and that's part of why um, they're raised like they're raised. Their 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 mouths are like they are. They, they, they wear what they wear, um, and, and, you know, they can have a, a social media account at, at such a young age, and et cetera, et cetera, is because I have, like I said, 20 kids, but two fathers that are in, you know, 20 of the kids' lives. That means that leaves 18, 18 unattended. I'm calling them unattended. Just like, just like you, if you leave a bag over there, it's the same concept. You leave in the bag, and guess what? If you leave a bag at an amusement park, if you leave that bag unattended, anybody can do one or two things. Put something in that bag or take that bag. All right? And social media is putting stuff in that bag. And the world is taking that bag away. And it's just a concept, man. So uh, I don't—they don't have the fathers in their lives, and so anything is getting into them, and 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 they're letting you know uh, their mamas, mamas. I mean, I mean, mamas, friends, and everybody else. They wanna, they wanna talk like them. They wanna dress like them. They wanna twerk because they see their mama twerk, et cetera, et cetera. So it's just a, it's just a sad, it's a sad case, man. But um, you know, this is what it is. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree with you, man. I think for me. You know, I have I have two kids, one who I live with currently, and then another one who lives in um in, in Raleigh Durham. And you know, I was fortunate enough to have both of my parents, and in a perfect world, I would have all of my kids in the same house with me. That would be a perfect world. But what I will say and, and, and hear me clearly, I think that even if you aren't with the mother or father of that child, it's imperative that 
that that you stay connected to that child. So you gotta do whatever you gotta do to make it work. But that child needs to see you and hug on you and touch you and and know that you, that you are there. You are their parent, whether you're their mother, their father, whatever you are. That you are that person to them, and that's somebody that they can call on when they need you. You know, you can ask my my daughter who lives in, in Raleigh Durham, who her daddy is. She know me. She know what I look like. She know she knows her sister. All of that stuff is important because just like Vince said, there's so much other bull crap going on in the world with social media and news and outside factors that could uh that could tarnish that relationship but i was fortunate enough to be able to uh you know to to co-parent with her mother and and get to a point where we could uh settle our differences and realize that it's all about the child and so i think that's very important oh yeah definitely Got anything else, Dave? Man, I think we really touched on it all, man. I, I, I just think, uh, you know, really it's just important to be the best version of yourself you can be. And then, you know, all this other white noise, man, will, will kind of take care of itself. At the end of the day, man, we got to live our own lives. And, uh, you know, people can say what they want about us. But, you know, if you go through every day and you try to be the best version of yourself, man, you're probably going to leave a good legacy behind. So, um, and keep people – I said this on Facebook yesterday, I'm telling you. Keep people around you that challenge you to be the best version of yourself. And that's real, I'm telling you. It's gonna, that's going to serve you well. Success breeds success. So you hang around with bums, don't be surprised when you a bum. <laughs> that's real. That's real. Vent, final thoughts, brother. Man, um, <clears throat> life, doesn't, life doesn't give you a good or give you a bad. All right. Um, I, hit, I hit the term... Life give you lemonades, make lemonade, or all that mess. No, 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 no. Once you're, once you're conceived and, and you're spit out, everything else that happens is up to you. Your mother could be a bum. Your mother could be, you know, maybe uh, on drugs. Mother, or your father could not have finished high school or, or college. But that has nothing to do with you. All right, so I'm a big advocate of hun. What you do is up to you. Now, I understand that we, you know, you attract what you attract. So if you're successful, you're going to attract success. If you're a bum, you're going to, uh, you know, you're going to attract bums. You know, I, I don't know how to use the word bum, but I get it. Um, but, <laughs> but, but see, what I'm saying is, even if I, even if I thought, you know what, I will break the curse. I'm going to be the, 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 the barrier. You know what I'm saying? It's going to stop here. Then I will leave my situation. I will leave my current friends. I will leave my current state. I will leave my current place. And I will start putting myself, I will start aligning myself in situations, in places, in workshops, in, in different networking sources, such that I can be successful. So stop using the, you know, stop throwing the pity party. Stop using that my mama this, my friend this. I'm the only person that went to college. Don't nobody care about that. Don't nobody care. When you were born, you you get you were given life. You were given the same abilities as as everybody else. Make it happen. Stop making excuses. Yeah, that's good, man. That's good, fellas. From all of this, I got three things. I got don't skip the struggle. You need the struggle. The struggle is is what makes you who you are. That's how you get to the success. The second thing, what they, or the, the last two things Dave said. Um, was kill the white noise. Forget all that other bull crap that's going on around you. And Vince kind of just spoke to that. What your mama doing, what she didn't do, what your daddy did, what he didn't do, what your friends doing, what they did, what they not doing, all that good stuff. And then I'm going to finish it with be the best version of you. Be the best version of Dave, Vince, EJ. Be the best version that you can, man. So again... It's the Barbershop Talk Podcast. We appreciate y'all listening. We'll catch uh, y'all uh, next time. Uh, 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 uh. Vince, get out the gym, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm on the bag, baby. I'm on the bag.